Good morning, Derby Grammar. I'm sat here in my office this morning thinking about how incredibly quiet school is without you all and how much we're missing you. It really makes me think about how much quiet time we are all experiencing as part of this social distancing phase of life. It's extraordinary times, of course. I don't have to explain that to you. You'll all be aware. But I do think that we need to reflect on history and some of the lessons that we can draw from history to help us through these rather unusual times. Pandemics, for example, are not a new concept to us. If we think back through history and identify other pandemics, we could, for example, point to the Black Death or the plague, as it was known. It was one of the most deadliest plagues that ever hit mankind. And in this country, it surfaced about 40 times between the 1300s and the 1600s. It was absolutely deadly. And the reason it was so deadly was because there was very limited scientific and medical knowledge in the causes and the cures of diseases at the time. So, for example, one of the ways in which you could treat yourself for the Black Death was perhaps to eat very strong herbs like horseradish. Can you imagine going to hospital now and being told to eat horseradish as a treatment for not feeling very well? Or if you wanted to get more creative, you could get a chicken, chop it up and rub it across your infected areas. Again, imagine that being prescribed by your doctors. But today, of course, we stand on the shoulders of giants, of medical geniuses and scientific geniuses that have shaped the way in which our services can treat and cure this virus. And that fills us with hope that we, of course, will have that cure within our grasp sooner rather than later. Another lesson from history, if we think back to the Black Death, is actually that of social distancing itself. That was when the concept really was first most widely used in this country. People at the time of the Black Death were asked not to frequent bars or cafes. They were asked to stay at home. They were asked to isolate themselves if they were experiencing symptoms. And it proved pretty effective, one of the most effective ways, in fact, in the way in which they approached its treatments and preventing its spread. One of the most famous people that got caught up in the social distancing of the 1660s was a very young scholar, you may have heard of him, called Isaac Newton. He was a young scholar at the University of Cambridge at the time. He'd not yet made his name. He wasn't particularly famous. But the University of Cambridge closed. And there was no remote learning for him. He had to escape the city. And fortunately, his family home was a very isolated rural place, not so far from here, in fact. You can still visit it today. It's a National Trust property. And he went and engaged in some isolation, social distancing there. And in the quiet time that he found himself in, he came up with some of his most revolutionary scientific theories of calculus and of optics that completely changed the way in which the world thought about science. Now, I'm not suggesting that you're all going to use these quiet periods of time that we've got at our disposition at the moment to become the next scientific genius. I wouldn't be surprised if you did actually, Derby Grammar boys and girls tend to go on and, and shake the world hard when they graduate from here. But perhaps we'll just use that silence and that quiet time to take that lesson from history and know that a quiet mind can in fact yield benefits and can indeed yield positive outcomes. So keep working hard. We miss you. We're looking forward to having you back. We are so proud of your achievements that you're all gaining through your remote learning and we'll see you very soon. Take care.